Alright, so this is a giant mess. This is the numbers with no rhombic to decahedrons around them. This is purely the true number matrix with no shapes around them. Interesting things happen when you start to look down different points. Um, for instance, here, if you look, all my fives line up, all my sixes, all my sevens, eights, nines, ones, twos, threes, everything lines up. If I back out, you can see kind of what axes I'm looking down. I'm looking from an angle. Um, if you were to we're going to find the right spot. You, if you look down the right angle, like this, you can see those layers I was talking about. Look, these are all three nines and sixes right here. This whole layer. And one eight interwo interweaves. Here it looks like you have sevens. Then five fours interweaves. Looks like you have ones. And then here two and sevens interweave. Again, like here. This like I do all day, and just try to, try to find all the patterns. The, if I go at this at a at an angle, this is what's interesting. If I were to look at this at an angle, you can see how I can see through my numbers here. So I'm at an angle, looking directly up like a corner of the whole the whole block. If I were to look down, look what I get: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's hard to see. And then one, two, three, four. I'm I'm just continuing that pattern of of the one and eights, the uh, polar number pairs. But let me shift over here and look at this other side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, those are the same. But if I go down one row, look what I have. I have four, four, six, two, eight, uh, nine, one, seven, three. Five five. I can just do this all day. It's just very interesting. Um, if I look at it from the top and look down at an angle, I get that same thing. Two five two five two five here. Five seven eight four two one five seven eight two four. Five two eight five two eight five two eight. It's just interesting all the different aspects of looking. Here you go. If you look real close right here, you can see I have all. That's well, kind of the same thing. But I like when you line it up and all the numbers match. You can actually look down the numbers as if they were all perfectly the same. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, well, no big deal. I showed it to you earlier. So there it is. Just numbers, nothing else. I'm going to quit moving it. It's kind of giving me a headache. Alright. Now let's look at positive and negatives. Okay, guys. So this is going to be something interesting. This is positive and negative. And basically what's what's happening is I have my basic building block here with my voids in the center. And I have my other three maps. So I have one map here with a set of negatives. One map here with a set of negatives. One map here with a set of negatives. Okay. Obviously I have my voids again. These numbers are actually dark or black. I'm going to go ahead and slide these in here so you can see um, what I'm talking about. Okay, so if I looked at this head on, black numbers are positive, other numbers are negative. I'm sorry, yeah. White numbers are positive, black numbers are negative. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, positive, negative, positive, negative. If you took a 9 and you, you know, did your nested border, see, you can see there it is. Where's the other one? Okay, now that's what that is is if you're looking down the Z. So let's go ahead and do this one. See, there's still voids. And there you go. 
go. So now I've got both of those number maps. As you can see again, you have sevens and twos. You have ones and eights. And the last number map. And again, these always create your doubling and halving and your gap space circuits. Circuits are always there. It's just in three-dimensional form. Just a little bit more. Okay. All right. So there you go. That is polarity. This is the positive and negative number maps. I'm gonna get this just right, and I'll just leave it here for a second, or you can pause the video. Yeah, you can study that. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Everything's all positive, and negative. Again, if I look at the, from the top, you can see my fives and my fours are together. You can see here my ones and my eights, and this one's kind of hard to see. Twos and sevens. Okay, so that's with polarity. Now I'll show you the full size building block um, with all the numbers in it of the polarity. Again, you can see how these numbers they interlace. This is what I was saying before, like if you look at the if you look at the numbers the positive building blocks the ones that are light color, you can see them from this axis. If I rotate up well, you can't look at that that way. Uh, you can see, you can still see them. They match up here. But these numbers are spaced behind it. See how there's threes below that? It's actually below it. So when you go to the top, you can't see it. That's that hidden number I'm talking about. And it definitely does have something to do with polarity. Okay, so what I have here is those building blocks with my voids in them. And this is where it kind of gets interesting, and I, I'm not sure about this, but this number map, if you're looking at it from the front, you be looking down the Z. And uh, if you're looking at it this way, if I can get it there, oh my, I'm in the wrong perspective. That's better. Okay. So I was looking down it this way. You're looking down the Y, and you look from the top, you're looking down the X. But here's here's what kind of throws me off. Um, these are all, pos all positive numbers, and these three interlaced numbers are all the negative. So in each one of these blocks, there's an equal amount of numbers. So that, that means that there's three times as many negative numbers as there is positive. I believe that's what this means, if, if I'm thinking of this right. So, what I'll go ahead and do is slide all these numbers in here so you can see where they fit. The only reason I'm doing that is so that you can actually see them go together. Maybe one day I'll record me building the whole thing, but I don't want to do that again. Okay. So, I'll plop this in here. Like that. So, now... I have my standard number map, map uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 3, 3, 9, 6, 6, 9, and your other 2, 8, 4, 7, uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Now if I look down this other direction, again I have void spots. You see those numbers are hidden behind these by a half of a step. That's what I was trying to say the whole time. Numbers are hidden when you write it down on paper. If you look at it three dimensional, it you know they're there obviously. So we'll go ahead and slide these together, so you can see these. Now what I'm going to do real quick so that we can see the voids that are hard to see. When you have all the numbers together, I'm going to turn this into um, the monochrome 
Okay. Now. Now you can see those those voids. They're right here. See how there's a piece missing? I can actually see the depth. Whereas if I look here, there is no there is no depth. You only have that one that one surface layer. But here, if you look, and it almost hurts my eyes. You can see a void spot. There, you can see one. See a side fits here, here, and then the back side here. Okay, so you can actually see where these yikes, where these voids fit in. Time out. Okay, I got stuck. Sorry. So here you can see those grommets and the voids. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take a cross section of this so you can actually see the numbers and the voids. I'm thinking you might be able to do that. Let's try it out. This should be pretty high resolution if you guys need to zoom in on it. Or make it bigger. Alright, there you can see, right there. There's a pretty good point of view. You can see where I have these voids. They almost look like they're sticking out, but they're not. They're sticking in. And this building block up here. You can see where the numbers are. I'm always missing one. Okay. Well, what do you mean you're always missing one? Well... This building block fits in here because I'm only have that one section. Now I'm just talking. I'll be quiet. Okay. So let's get rid of that. And let's go ahead and stick this. Let's do this without the number so you can actually see where this fits. These points just all meet up. It's the easiest way to do this. Now you can see where that void is. You can see how this just fits right in there. See that? Now, I have no voids on top. No voids on the sides, no voids on the bottom. You see that now? Those voids are gone. Because there are multiple sets. You have a base block and then three other sets that fit in there to make up your other axes. So we'll go back to the uh, standard crazy colors here. And there is your positive and negatives all the way around. You can see what I'm saying here where you see a slice, if you will, of positives. Uh, let me go to this side so you can see it better. Okay. So um, this is a full 9x9 nine nine building block of the Rodin Matrix Vortex Math. And um, is this accurate, if you ask me? I don't know. Today is October 21st, 2010, and Marco Rodin and Greg Volk and other people involved with them are working on this right now. So this is the top top-notch, the most advanced, as far as looking at it in 3D like this. I don't know what else to, uh, to say about that part of it.